Hello everyone, welcome to design of steel structure. In this video lecture, we will cover column base. But before starting this column base, let us understand these uh, other things which are important also. So as you see on your screen, this is a steel structure. Okay, and here in this steel structure, there are varieties of members engaged to serve the purpose. Now, as a structural engineer, we have to design all the members to so that the structure serves its purpose. So, depending on the purpose or the load, the different members are there, like there are tension member, there are compression member, there are flexural member, and also the footing. So, all the members have different purpose, different function. We have to understand the behavior of each and every member to design it, pro it properly. So, before actual construction, we should uh, generally analyze the structure and the analysis is done by proper modeling, by simulation process in the software or by manually. So, the behavior under the load, okay, the structural behavior under the load is load should be understood properly because there are a lot of uh, varieties of load that means dead load, live load, also the earthquake load and wind load. So different load acts from different directions. So if all the loads or some of the loads are acting on the structure, how the member will behave? What will be the forces? What will be the bending moment in the members? So that should be known to design it properly. So while you will design this structure, the structure should not collapse. So we have to ensure the strength as well as the serviceability condition. Now, now the first thing which we have studied that is connection. So uh, connection may be done by riveting or bolting and then we have studied this tension member because some of the member will be under tension force so that should be designed properly then some of the member will be under compression so that member also should be designed properly and what is the force transfer mechanism because slab is transferring its load okay and imposed load and its self weight to the beam and beam is transferring the load to the column and column is transferring the load to the foundation so if every member serve the purpose that means uh, slab and then beam uh, and column then another thing is important that is foundation if the load is not transferred to the soil through foundation then at the foundation level at the bottom level it will collapse so in this video lecture we will understand how to design this foundation level or column base at the base of the column we have to design the column base so that it properly transfer the load of the superstructure to the substructure that means the soil okay or to the footing so here you can see this at this level there is this call is column base you will see it uh, in the next slide now let us uh, just uh, roughly go through the members which are available in this structure there are horizontal members there are uh, vertical members there are uh, maybe slabs in between these okay also there are mm, uh, cross bracing here Okay, these are horizontal members and here you can see on this uh, staircase okay, there are um, uh, cross bracing or X bracing in the vertical plane. So when the load is acting the behavior should be understood by proper modeling. So which member is going to take which type of load that should be understood properly. So now let us uh, go to the main topic that is column base. So, Today's content is introduction to column base, then number two types of column base, function of different column base arrangement and number four discussion of recommendation by IS 800 2007 on column base design, number five discussion on design parameters and their derivation and number six is numerical example. So in this video lecture we will discuss point number one. 2, 3 and 4. 
and we, in the next video lecture we will discuss these point number five and six so let us move to the next slide so what is column base column base are basically steel plate placed at the bottom of the column the function of the base plate is to transmit the column load to the concrete pedestal so here you can see in this figure there is a column on the bottom of the column there is a steel plate this is called base plate or column base and below that there is a concrete pedestal and that pedestal is supported on the soil and the force transfer mechanism is the load from the superstructure is coming through this column and from that column to the base plate and from base plate to the concrete pedestal and from pedestal to the soil so we should notice that the high amount of load from the superstructure which is coming through this uh, to this column is transferred to the concrete pedestal by this small cross sectional area okay so if we provide if we put this column directly on the concrete pedestal what will happen so high amount of load by this smaller cross sectional area will be stress that will be very high so this high amount of stress will be shared or will be supported by this concrete pedestal now as we know the strength of concrete is very less compared to the steel so at the junction point at the junction point of the column steel column and the concrete pedestal the concrete may fail so if, if the concrete fails that means if the concrete is not capable to carry this compression load so the structure will collapse because foundation should be strong enough to uh, to uh, stop this collapse of the structure so so here what should be done as the stress is much more so we have to give more area to the load transfer mechanism that means here initially if we don't provide this base plate the high amount of load will be transferred by this smaller cross sectional area so here we have to increase this area so how can we increase if we support this column by this base plate by inserting a base plate in between this concrete pedestal and this column that means this base plate will be supporting this column so the load from the column will be transferring to the base plate of this particular area and that area is much more than this cross sectional area so the effective stress at this level will be lesser okay so lesser load lesser stress will be transferred to the concrete pedestal so we are uh, just uh, reducing the effective stress which is acting on the concrete pedestal so that the concrete pedestal does not fail okay so this is the purpose of this uh, base plate so this column should be connected with the base plate and this base plate should be connected with the concrete pedestal you know how to construct and how to design this concrete pedestal in your uh, rcc design you have studied this so you have to connect all the members so the column and the base plate is connected by this arrangement there are other arrangement also okay and this base plate is connected to the concrete pedestal by anchoring bolt there will be some anchoring bolt here okay anchoring bolt here okay so the anchoring bolt will be penetrated to the concrete pedestal so this is the concept behind this column base now let us go to the column cap okay this is not in your syllabus but uh, for understanding you should know so as some plate is required at the junction of this footing or the base and the column because the stress is maximum at this point at the connection point at the contact surfaces so we are reducing this uh, stress effective stress by inserting this base plate in similar to this the stress which are transferring by this beam okay to the column so stress at this contact surface will be much more okay same phenomenon so here also you have to provide some arrangement so that the stress effective stress on these uh, contact surfaces read is reduced so here column cap is provided and 
here it is simply uh, simply a, a beam column connection and here you can see this is also column and this is uh, like a truss is there so this truss is supported by this steel column so here this on above this column there is a column cap and this is the truss total truss here so this truss member is uh, like uh, axial member so it transfers only axial force so here it will be axial force so what may happen that this axial force will try to create some moment here means it will try to overturn this uh, column okay so we have to keep these points in mind while we are designing because which what are the forces which are coming on the uh, element okay that should be kept in your mind so that it will uh, help you to avoid the miscalculation okay so let us go to the next slide so now what is type of column base so first is slab base so slab base is one which is which transmits direct load only okay so as you can see this is the figure so here in this figure the load will be only axial but you know that the column are subjected to bending moment also so if the column is not subjected to any appreciable amount of bending moment or considerable amount of bending moment in that case we should go for slab base okay Sim that is very simple this is just a sim simple case of column base now another one is gusset base so this this is the case where appreciable bending moment is there in addition to the direct load so in that case we have to uh, make some arrangement so that the connection or the column base is capable to support this bending moment okay so we have to design so that it does not fail so here you can see this is the gusset plate this is the column and this is the cleat angle okay so in between the column range and the cleat angle there is a gusset plate and it is beveled here okay so and also if you notice it there is a angle section on the wave portion that is connecting this column wave and this base plate okay so in case there is a bending moment in addition to direct load we have to provide this gusset plate okay so now uh, this is called wave cleat so see it now so this is a uh, image which i have taken near patapur so here you can see this is a small industrial building for factory purpose so here you can see there are a lot of uh, truss okay and the truss is supported by these columns and below that column this portion is called the column base so we have to design this as this structure is very small in comparison to the uh, high rise steel structure so it is uh, less important you can say but not that much less important that you ignore the design okay so this is uh, column base here you can see this is the column base so let us look at close uh, this junction closely so here you can see this column is supported on this concrete pedestal and in between this i section and in between this concrete pedestal there is a steel plate and you can see there is a anchoring which is connecting this uh, base plate with the uh, concrete pedestal and there is uh, this plate is provided here this stiffener is provided here so we will understand the purpose of this uh, stiffener and these extra plates okay that means this gusset plate now now what are the different type of column base arrangement so here you see this is the first figure the column is here these extra plates are here and this base plate is here second figure you can see 
there is a extra this thing or extra this uh, cassette plate or is provided here and to support this cassette plate here uh, this bracket plate is provided in between this base plate and this cassette plate okay and third figure you can see this is the arrangement so we have to understand what is the importance of these extra elements that are provided in different situations okay so let us understand one by one so here in this first figure you see this base plate is supporting this column this column is i section this is z axis this is y axis so as you know this r z is uh, more than this r y that means z axis is the stronger axis y axis is the weaker axis so resistivity to rotation about z axis is more than the resistivity to rotation about this y axis so in this axis the resistance is more so so if the load is acting on this z axis okay if you see the plane yz plane the load is acting on the z line okay so what will happen it will try to rotate the member like this okay so it will rotate about this y axis so as you know y axis is the weaker axis so how can we ensure the stability of this column if the load is acting here that means load is eccentric about this y axis so that can be ensured by increasing the resistivity to the rotation about y axis so how can you provide this resistivity so we have to provide this extra plates here on this directions so whenever this column will try to rotate in this direction so this extra plate will try to say that no you can't rotate okay so that's how we can provide some resistivity extra resistivity in the rotation of y axis okay in next figure you see here this is the extra plate which is provided on the with the flange flange surfaces and this uh, gusset this plate and this flange is connected by the proper welding okay on the connection surfaces okay and this plate this plate is supported by this bracket plate so that so that it cannot rotate about this z axis also suppose the load or the bending moment is much more so that the, we have to increase rotational resistivity about the z axis so we have to provide this bracket so that we can increase the resistivity about this z axis so whenever this column will try to rotate about this z, y axis then this plate will try to say that no you can't rotate because it is supporting this uh, column and when the column is trying to rotate about this z axis so this bracket will say that no you can't rotate about this axis so they are the supporting element which increases the resistivity okay so in the third figure you can see so this is uh, symmetric so here in this both the directions like like this direction and this direction we have increased these uh, rotational resistivity by same amount so this is the actually best but this depends on the requirement so in some situation we have to increase the rotational, uh, rotational resistivity uh, rotational resistivity about z axis and in some situation it will have to increase the rotational resistivity about the z axis so it depends on situation so you should not kept any prejudice about this uh, arrangement that this arrangement is the best this arrangement is, is the worst so it depends on the demand of the situation okay now let us move to the next section so here in some situation you need to increase the strength okay uh, 
and that strength can be increased by making or by providing this this stiffener okay so here you see this is the eye section or on the flange this is the channel section this is the channel section like this okay channel section and in between the channel section there is some stiffeners okay which increases uh, the rotational resistivity okay by a higher amount so this type of stiffener is also required in some cases and also it depends on on the situation now what are the parameters which should be designed for the column base so so in this figure you can see a uh, typical picture of slab base so here in this figure so this is the front view of this column base and this is the plan view or top view of the column base so in this figure there is a i section and uh, these two angle sections that means cleat angle here also cleat angle and these angles are connect connecting this column and the base plate and in this position and in this position there are two anchor bolts or hold down bolts so which which holds down this total arrangement so here in this picture you see the uh plan view so this is the i section this is the i section okay uh this portions and this is the angle section from this point to this point so this total total thing is uh, angle section and here also this is angle section so so uh these are these bolts are shown here and this bolt is this bolt right so here from steel table you can find the specification of this uh defined section i section and you need to find out this length of this slab base this is the length you see this is the length and this from this point to this point you have to find out the base or width length and height whatever you can you can say so this is the dimension l into b so this dimension should be uh, found <coughs> okay and also you see there is a thickness because how much thick this plate should be to carry this load to distribute this uh, load from the column to the um, this concrete okay so that need to be found so here you see the design of column base plate uh, involves two major steps that is h into b so this is b and this is h that means the dimensions then determining the thickness this thickness okay this thickness then what are the governing forces which uh, governs this design so column bases are primarily subjected to bearing pressure from below and bending moment and shear force now you have to understand this point very carefully so as this load is acting downward direction this moment is also acting and this load is supported by this base plate so the base plate is pushing this concrete in the downward direction so this concrete will be uh, generating some reaction and that reaction is considered to act on the whole plate uniformly so the pressure distribution from the below to top that means in this direction is assume that it is uniform okay so this base plate is subjected to the bearing pressure from the concrete surface and you see here the upward pressure will try to bend this portion of the base plate okay and also here this portion of the base plate 
will be bent by this upward force so that uh, bending moment should be used to find out the required thickness of this base plate so that it should not bend this base plate should not bend due to this upward bearing pressure so this base plate will be subjected to this bearing pressure then this bending moment and the shear force because all are uh, all will be acting in this base plate so these are the force which should be uh, should be governing the design and this moment is also the governing parameters means this affects the behavior it has the influence so pressure or the load sorry total compression load total bending moment these will have influence in the design so we'll study this deta uh, detailed designing procedure in the next video lecture so don't worry now now is code is 800 2007 has some guidelines and these guidelines are available in the clause number 7.4 in page number 46 now let us go to this uh, is code so we have to go to page number 46 so this is 46 so in clause number 7.4 there are some guidelines about this column base okay so there are lot of guidelines so i will but i will suggest to redo some points you can read the, all the points okay so first point which i want to mention that is the maximum bearing pressure should not exceed the bearing strength equal to 0.6 fck where fck is the smaller of, of characteristic strength so uh, so below the base plate we will provide concrete pedestal so that concrete pedestal will be made of from particular grade of concrete then it will have a, a fixed fck so the bearing pressure that is the capacity of the concrete pedestal that is 0.6 fck okay so that should not be exit now IS 456-2000 suggests that the bearing strength should not exit 0.45 fck so I will suggest you to use this uh, 0.45 fck as the bearing strength of the concrete for the foundation design now next point is uh, slab base thickness okay the minimum thickness ts of rectangular slab bases supporting column under axial compression shall be ts is equal to 0 0.25 200 0.2.5 uh, w into this and this okay so here you need to see uh, this s a and b should be known so what is a and b a and b is mentioned here a is larger projection and b is smaller projection of the slab base beyond the rectangular column okay rectangular circumscribing the column and tf is the flange thickness of the compression member so this is this thickness should be more than this tf so here you should know a and b from the figure so here you see this is a and this that means from this base of the column okay this dimension is a and this is the plane edge so this dimension is b okay so these are the projections so a is the uh, larger projection and b is the smaller projection so whichever will be less that should be used for your case so next is uh, this thickness should be more than this tf and and then uh, you should read this point that is point number 7.4.1.1 if the size of the base plate is larger than the required to limit the bearing pressure on the base support 
an equal projection C of the base plate beyond the face of the column and gusset base may be assumed may be taken as the effective in transferring the column load as given in figure 9. So that means if the size what we are providing that is more than the required then an equal projection C of the base plate beyond the face of the column. Okay, so see this figure what the is the required size of the base plate that is less than the provided then here this dimension is C from the face of the column this dimension is C in every direction okay in every point this is C so this area okay this area will be effective in resisting the bearing pressure which will be acting from bottom to top here also th same thing here also same thing here also same thing and here also same thing then this point should be treated when only the effective area of the base plate is used as in 7.4.1.1 as in this clause so in that case c square may be used in the above equation instead of this part okay so instead of this part we can use c square when this extra size of base plate is used then the area which will be effective in resisting the bearing pressure that will be this shaded portion so then we can change this calculation okay then uh, there is nothing I will suggest but I you can read it if you are interested that's all from the IS 800. So, in the next video lecture, we will cover the design aspect and also we will cover the numerical uh, examples.